Hi, I'm Nick Mendoli with Visual South. Today we're going to be talking about the project management functionality within Infor Cloud Suite Industrial Sightline. If you're a manufacturer managing long-running projects that take months as opposed to just weeks or days, and you want to capture costs of engineering, design, uh, service installation, or, or service management. If you have invoice milestones, revenue milestones, revenue recognition, uh, things like WIP relief. These are all things that you could do within the project management system that comes standard in Cloud Suite Industrial. We're going to take a quick look at what we can do with project management in Cloud Suite Industrial Sightline. As a project manager, I'm going to start off in my project manager workspace. This is where I can get to all of the shortcuts that I would normally do as a project manager, and I could see some key metrics that, that are important to me as a project manager. We're going to come back a little bit later on and take a look at some of the data that we can start drilling through once we have a project built. But for now, I'm just going to go into my projects and show you how we build a project. When my project screen opens, I have it set to filter all of my projects on the screen. Otherwise, I can filter an individual project. The project that I want to look at in this example is going to be Project DX13. This is a fictitious sign company and we just have some examples of the different things with a sign company because with a project I want to be able to attach my engineering, my design work, uh, I might have some production orders for manufacturing, I may have direct purchase orders for the project. Uh, I also may have services involved, installation and things like that. So I want all of that information connected to my project. And this main project screen is where I can see the summary of all of that information. So I can see my project is active. I can see the start and end dates of this project of when I'm attempting to start and complete the entire project. And of course, everything's going to be measured from that. I can see if the project is in control or not, meaning is it on time, on budget. Uh, but I also get a, a late alert. It's letting me know that parts of my project are late. The project in, in total is on time, but there may be some tasks or resources that are scheduled to be late within it. So it's just giving me that, that alert. I can see if my project came from an estimate originally. So I can tie back to that. I can drill back into that to see how I estimated this. I can set my overhead and GNA rates, and I can set an end user type for this if I wanted to report based on end user types for my projects. If I go into my tree view, my detail, here's where I can see all of my tasks for this particular project. And we're going to go into the detail of this in a little while. Uh, but even within those tasks, I can see what we call resources. And resources would be any items or labor resources that are part of this project. Up top, I can look at my total revenue for it. I can see how I'm calculating my milestones. We'll look at that in a little while also. My revenue calculation. I can see what my project planned totals are and compare those to my actuals as the project moves along. And you can see this project, I haven't done anything within it yet to get those actuals because I haven't posted any revenue or invoice milestones beyond a prepayment uh, milestone, which we'll, we'll see as we look into that. I can look at my percent complete. And now since we're at the project top level, this percent complete is really for the entire project. So I can see all of my different cost codes rolling up into the project. And all these cost codes are coming from the different tasks and resources that I have within the project. Job orders, uh, service orders, purchase orders, all of that is drilling into this particular window so I can see the summaries. I can see any actual cost versus my forecasted and budgeted costs for those particular cost codes. And then of course the cost to complete, the difference between what my uh, forecast and what my actual is, and a percentage of that. My percent complete details gives me more information because now we're looking at period costs. So it takes all of those cost codes and then it's separating it by the period. So I can see how, you know, what costs I have for each of these different activities for these periods and my actuals and forecasted and budgeted uh, within those different periods. I can look at my invoicing. Uh, so my invoice method in this example is set to revenue recognition. I could set it to manual. A project doesn't have to be for a customer. A project could be an internal project where you're adding an addition to your building and you want to capture those costs within a project, in which case I can uh, set that to manual because I'm not going to be recognizing any revenue for that. Uh, but the ability to set my invoicing tied to that revenue recognition means that when we look at our 
revenue milestones, uh, whether they're manual or based on completion of a specific task, I can indicate if I want my invoice milestone to be part of that also. So when I recognize that revenue, it will also generate that uh, invoice milestone for me. I can create retentions. So if your, if your business uses uh, retention in your projects, meaning, you know, at the, the end of a project, maybe um, I invoice the entire project, but we're going to hold back 10%, you know, for 30 days to make sure that everything is good and working properly before the customer owes that final 10%. You can see all my work in process accounts that I'm going to be tying it to. So I can separate that from if I do regular manufacturing without projects, um, I can, I can see the difference between work in process that's tied to projects versus toward my typical manufacturing process. I can also relieve WIP. If you have long running projects, you're going to be collecting WIP all throughout and you can define how you want to relieve that WIP uh, as opposed to keeping it on the books until the, the entire project is completed. So uh, with revenue recognition, which is what I chose as the relief method, I can simply tell it if I'm recognizing revenue at certain milestones or maybe once a month, uh, then I can relieve the WIP at the same time. So I can uh, take the WIP off the uh, uh, off the books and credit that. So back to our general tab. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into the details now. Our summary is our project header. We can take a look at the tasks now. And here you can see I have project management, design approval, some engineering, uh, applying for permits. And then I have my production and purchasing, which is where my items are going to uh, uh, be produced. So here I'm just defining all of my tasks, the start and due dates of those tasks. Same thing on the percent complete. Now I'm at the detail level because I'm at a cost code task level. And these are what roll up into that project main header window, but it's all coming from here. And I can see that I've got project management and I have two different cost codes for project management. It could be possibly, you know, typical project management. And then maybe I have a project manager who's in charge of all projects who puts in some time also. So, you know, they could be different costs. So I could separate those out and have two different um, cost codes to that single task. So I can see my actuals, of course, and based on my forecasts and, and budgets. And you can see I even applied some actual time for this, this other project management cost code, even though it wasn't budgeted or forecasted, just because I like to see, you know, different things come in through the project, because uh, our real project could have some unexpected costs associated with it. I get that summary down at the bottom. And of course, here it's adding my G&A, which on that front screen, as you remember, we added that 10%. So it's, it's calculating that uh, g &A and overhead at 10% uh, and, and giving me my, my final costs should be or projected costs, budget costs and actual costs. Same thing with the complete details. I'm still looking at it by period. So it breaks out that particular task by period. And you can see in this particular one that project management is actually spread out over uh, multiple periods throughout the lifespan of this project until it's complete because it doesn't all happen in a single month. I want to spread that cost over uh, many months and uh, throughout the, the life of the project. So I'm projecting properly. So the next thing we want to look at are resources and resources could be a couple of different things on project management, for example, or engineering, you know, like we said, we want to spread that out. A resource is going to be a labor resource. So if I look at the resources associated with that project management uh, task number 10, I can see this is where I'm spreading it out over different periods throughout the course of the particular project and, uh, and those will all have their uh, individual costs. So I'm specifying, you know, what cost I expect to incur for each one of those periods from a project management standpoint in this particular example. If I go back to my project tasks and look at something like production, this is going to be a little different because the production side of this from a project resource standpoint is going to be my actual items that I'm producing in my shop floor. But now these are associated to the project. So the cost as that job gets produced on the shop floor is going to be tied directly into this project since I am sourcing to a job. So you can see on this particular one, if I'm looking at this stop sign, for example, I have a job associated to it. So that job is the source for this particular resource. And I can see the work centers out of my shop floor. And if this was in process, I would be able to look at what is actually going on with this. This one doesn't, it's all zero, so it, it hasn't actually started yet, but I can track what my estimated time and cost is for this particular job and compare that to what's actually happening with the job out on the shop floor. 
And again, I can see the completion of that. And I can see I've got some, you know, it, it totals that up as a manufactured material. If I want to look at the actual job cost codes, I have labor and manufactured materials as part of the job. Another resource could be something like installation. So it's not a job order. This is now a service order. And since we have a completely integrated service management program in the system, that allows us to now source to a service request order as opposed to a job order. So if I look at my resources for that, here's my installation. And when I come over to my source, now I'm looking at an SRO, a service request order. So uh, as opposed to just a job. So with the service management system that we have, we, we can tie it right to a service order. So coming back to our project manager workspace now, if we wanted to drill in and take a look at that specific job, I can start seeing some detail on it. If I go to my navigator, for example, if I look at my projects, there's my DX13 project that is highlighted. I can see those tasks here, right? So here's all of my tasks that we were just looking at. I can see the late alerts on the individual tasks. So that gives me some information. I can see I have cost code variances. Uh, and the cost code variance is either um, apply, you know, capturing cost or incurring costs outside of the period that I uh, budgeted for or forecasted for, or the cost of it is beyond what I originally forecasted. Down on the bottom, if I was to look at something like our production, for example, where we had our uh, production orders associated with it, here's where I can see how those production orders are doing. So here's that, you know, a stop sign in this case. I have a store sign, a, a yield sign. Uh, I can see all the projected dates on it. My costs incurred. We have a lot of other information. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you know, another the one that I like is the costing activity because here's where I can see by cost code all of my different tasks. Uh, and this is for all of my uh, projects, not just that project that I'm looking at, the DX13. This is for all of my projects. I get a view of all of the costs that I've incurred in the different periods from, from the current period and backwards. The other thing we can do with the project is set our revenue and invoice milestones. They can be tied to each other, but they don't have to be. I can recognize revenue separately from creating those invoice milestones. In general, I like to you know, tie it to the revenue milestone. So if I go into my revenue milestones, you can see here that I have a milestone for a down payment first, which really doesn't tie to anything. That The only thing that's tied to is saying, hey, to get this project started, we're gonna, we're gonna need a down payment on this. And you can see I set this one for $10,000 and told it the date that I expect that. And that. This one has already been posted and invoiced. So I, I know that this one is actually complete. But as we move along through the project, I can also set milestones based on completion of certain tasks. The requirement. You can see on, in this example, my requirement is task 20, which is design approval. I have set to, re it's required to be complete. So I cannot nominate this particular revenue milestone until that task is set to complete. So once that's complete and I'm able to then nominate it, which the system will automatically nominate it if you choose to. So it'll know that, hey, you've reached the completion of that milestone event will automatically nominate it and it'll show up to be posted. And then I can, you know, of course, post my nominated invoices. All of these different milestones that I'm doing for revenue would then turn into invoice milestones. So you can see there's only one right now because we only created that down payment. As we process through and we create those other revenue uh, recognition, nominate and post those other revenue milestones, that's when I'll see these additional invoice milestones automatically get added. Likewise, I could set my work in process or whip relief to tie to that also. So as I recognize that revenue, it will also uh, relieve the whip that I have on the books currently for that up until that point. You also have the ability to track changes. So if you turn that on, now what you can do is Every time a change to this project happens, it's going to record it and we'll be able to create project change orders. That is typically used um, on, on a project, unless it's an internal project, then it doesn't matter. Uh, but for a customer, usually you'll, you'll want to turn that on so you can track any changes that are made to it and, and keep track of uh, all of those change orders and the costs associated with those change orders. One final thing we want to show is our Infor document management solution. 
And that is also part of the Cloud Suite, which ties itself directly to our projects or any other functionality within uh, Infor Cloud Suite Industrial. And in this case, we're looking at projects, so we can see all documentation that may be related to this particular project. In this case, we're looking at the X13 as our project. If I open up my context apps, I can see all of the documents that have been associated to this. Uh, I can also tie new documents to it very easily. So if I wanted to just go into my document folder and just drag and drop a new document and tie it to this specific project, upload that, and it does add it to our document management system, but it also adds the attribute of this project number that I associated with it. Uh, so at any time, I could look at all of the documents in one repository that are related to this particular project. Or I can tie them to individual tasks or resources on those individual forms so that you can separate them from the main project if you wanted to. But this all ties into, so I can click on it and take a view of what that particular file is or I can open it up within the document management solution. And you can see this is a full solution, so I, I have to check it out to make changes to it and then check it back in. It has security associated with who is allowed to do that. I could look at any historical changes, so if I do check out and check back in, it will keep track of that history of any changes that are made to it and, and keep versioning of it. Uh, the other thing I could do is just if I'm looking at this one, since I came from that project originally, if I close that form, now I'm looking at all of those documents uh, that were related to that particular project because they have that same attribute of that project number. That was just a brief overview of what you could do with project management within CloudSuite Industrial Sightline. For more information, contact us at visualsouth.com.